Okay, hello everybody. Um, thank you for watching my video for the upcoming eager conference about reading into slow text comprehension and slow to picture reading. Now, my name is Birte. I am a psychologist by training and I currently work as a postdoc at NYU in New York. And the research that I'm going to present to you today um, is a collaboration with Monika Chenze at uh, Lausanne University Lübeck in Germany. And it was started in the lab of uh, Professor Gabriele Oetting at the University of Hamburg and um, still done in affiliation also with the Max Planck Institute for Interpretive Aesthetics, also in Germany. So this is why I had to put a lot of different uh, university icons on the first slide. But now let's get to what I'm actually going to talk about today, which is flow. Now, flow is defined as the optimal experience of complete engagement with a goal-oriented activity. And I think this little sketch here illustrates it quite nicely that flow really is a specific state of mind that is also quite different from our everyday experience in that it is experienced as more positive, actually. Um, and this year's flow theory in a nutshell. So flow is thought to be the holistic state that occurs whenever the challenge level of creativity is perfectly balanced with the skill level of the person. And later flow research has actually shown that this should both be in the upper echelon. So um, best conditions for flow state would be high challenges and high skill. Now flow is characterized by a bunch of different so-called flow components, which are experiential phenomena that if they all occur at the same time, kind of become more than the sum of their parts and then become this um, holistic flow state. Um, and as you can see here by my color coding already, uh, luckily we don't have to remember all of these nine flow components because we can group them onto other sub-dimensions. On the one hand, intrinsic motivation, so when you flow, you're really enjoying what you're doing for its own sake. Um, on the other hand, absorption, so when you flow, you're really focused on what you're doing and everything that's not related to this kind of goes to the background of your mind. And that's what we need to use processing. So when you're in flow, you're able to um, do whatever you're doing without having to stop and actively think about it. So it's all very intuitive and very fluent, which is also where the word flow comes from. Now, one of the reasons why psychologists like myself are interested in flow states is besides its obvious connection to motivation and like positive mood that it might um, improve performance. So on the one hand, we can expect positive long-term effects on flow because due to the intrinsic motivation that is uh, uh, an integral part of it, it will uh, make people practice more and then they will get better over time. And if they still want to get into flow, they need to seek out increasingly high challenge levels, which will help them further develop their skills, which you can see here in this adaptation of the original so, um, channel model. And as you can see, there's also some empirical evidence to back this up. And we can also actually expect immediate positive effects of flow because people are flow in flow out by definition, more focused, um, execute the task more fluently, and are more engaged. And again, there's some empirical evidence for this already. The two examples that I put on the slide are actually from the academic sector, so not specifically reading, but um, tasks that often involve reading. Now, speaking of reading, um, flow during reading can then be defined as the optimal experience of complete engagement with the construction of a story model from the text. So the goal-oriented activity that we're engaging in while we're reading really is deconstruction of a story model. And I'm far from the first scholar to discuss flow states during fiction reading. For instance, here you can see that the Zell and Atlantic um, integrated flow into their narrative engagement model in 2008. But when I started my research as a PhD student, um, there wasn't that much empirical research about flow during fiction reading. So the first thing I did was to have a look at the flow theory again and see whether it fits to the reading context. And I think it does. So first of all, this idea that there has to be a balance between um, challenges and skills, I think that goes also for the challenge level of the text. So every opportunity that the text offers to the reader to engage with it and the reader skill level. So um, not just the skills, but also the motivations of the reader to engage with the text. And if that kind of is like a perfect match, then reader will get it to flow. 
Now, if you look at the different flow components, you will see that the intrinsic enjoyment one and most of all the absorption ones fit in very well with the context of reading. The ones where it gets a bit more complicated are the smooth uh, processing ones because they were worded in a way that makes a lot of sense if you think of these really like active activities like sports or gaming, which is what the researchers typically um, uh, look at. Whereas reading seems a bit more passive because it's a mental activity, so we may have to reword these components a little bit to make them make sense. Here, um, for instance, if you have the component feeling of control, you might as well call it feeling of competence, and that is something that has to make sense for reading. Um, instead of perception of coherent demands, I would talk about perception of just like a general fit or match. And instead of clear goals, I would say clear of schema activation because that's what happens in the ideal case when you're reading. And instead of perception of common basis feedback, I would say ease of cognitive accessibility. So it's really about how easily you can get into whatever you're doing, in this case, reading. Um, and starting from this, I developed a self-report measure for flow during reading the fiction reading flow scale, or in short FRFS, which has 27 items, so three per flow component on the three top dimensions, and in the end, we can calculate a joint flow score. And here are some example items from the scale. Now, the way I see flow during reading is that it's really kind of a catalyst for other experiential phenomena that can occur during reading, but that are more text specific. Um, so for instance, identification, of course it doesn't happen with every text that you read, but um, if you are if you get into a flow state during reading, so this is like the, the optimal engagement, then it's far more likely for you to also identify with the characters. And as you can see here in um, uh, a 2020 paper, me and my colleagues actually found some evidence for this idea. And the thing I would want to, to focus on for today is that we also found some evidence that flow might mediate between the reader's general skill level and the text comprehension that they show after reading. So there could also be a positive performance effect uh, of flow in the context of reading because I think text comprehension is kind of the, the task or the, the performance that you, you, um, you have when you're reading. Now, text comprehension, of course, is also a huge field. Um, I will get now focus on the model that was proposed by Kinch and Van Dijk in 1978 for text comprehension, um, where they suggest that there are different um, levels of semantic representation of the text. On the one hand, the micro level, which is very local, and it's basically just a linear or hierarchical sequence of the textual position, so the like chunks of meaning. Um, that are in the sentence and you obtain them just by encoding the sentences. Then the macro level, which is more global, which is like the overall discourse structure of the text, which you obtain by reducing, generalizing, and organizing the propositions on the micro level using your cognitive schema term. And last but not least, the inference level, which kind of goes beyond the text because it's basically the missing links between the propositions that you can obtain by deducing or interpreting the information that you have. Um, in combination with uh, what you, you know from your cognitive schema cell. And Shenzhen Ballard in 2022 showed that these are really three distinct factors yet positively correlated. Now, as you can probably guess by now, the research question for this study is do flow experiences during reading predict readers text comprehension? And we had this same hypothesis for each of the different levels because the micro level is basically encoding details from the text. So the more focused you are because you flow, the easier that should come to you. Um, the micro level, as I said, is like understanding the discourse structure. Again, the person is in flow and can very fluently um, process all the text information that should come more easily to them. And similar with the inferences. So if a person is really engaged, in the story because they are so when they read it they should also come up um, with more correct inferences um to study this empirically we had a sample of 144 psychology students average, students average age um, 26 years um a whopping 80 percent of them female and 75 percent holding a qualification for university entrance so highly educated, relatively highly educated, and 
mostly female. Our inclusion criteria were that they were German native speaker or German bilingual native speaker and they had to be above the legal age in Germany. Exclusion criteria would be dyslexia, um, failing our attention check that were embedded in the survey or um, reading for less than five minutes because um, knowing what we know from um, eye movement research, that would not be a realistic reading time for the text that they had to read. Now, first of all, in the study, we measured um, two covariates. On the one hand, um, the participants' general reading motivation, and on the other hand, their reader skill level. Then we had them read a short story, and in the end, we measured um, our theoretical predictor and criterion, which would be flow and text comprehension. Now, for the covariate measurement, we used the SLS Berlin, which is a German computer-based screening test for reading proficiency in adults, which is important because um, I couldn't find any other measure for adults specifically. Like most reader skill tests are always for um, younger adults or um, yeah, for people that are still learning to read. Um, but this text has been uh, valid, uh, val sorry, validated on a big norm sample showed high reliability and uh, evidence for validity. And it contains uh, 77 sentences that increase in linguistic complexity. And then your task is to make a binary decision if the sentence adheres to basic world knowledge or not. So you have two buttons. And if you think, yeah, that sentence makes sense, you press one button, for instance, here for an item that says, for safety reasons, smoking is prohibited at federal stations. And if you think the item doesn't make sense, for instance, here um, for the item with the scale, the height of a person is measured, then you uh, push the other button. And then in the end, we calculate a score of the correctly just sentences within a span of three minutes. So the test is time constrained, but um, the participant is not told about this. And all in all, was um, sampled at the beginning and stuff, it takes like seven minutes to do this. And we integrated this into our online survey. So <laughs> this is also a little bit of advertisement block for this test, even though I didn't develop it. So this, that's not why I'm advertising it just because I found it's a very good measure for reader skills and adults, because again, I didn't find many alternatives. Um, the other covariate was the general reading motivation. So here we use the German translation of the adult reading motivation scale, which is 21 items on four subscales, reading as part of the self, reading efficacy, reading for recognition, reading to do well in other realms. And because the internal consistency was quite high, was 0.87, and because some of these items actually belong to more than just one subscale, we in the end calculated a joint reading motivation score. Now, the text simile that we used is a short story called The Hidden Side of the Coin by Boris Gaveson, which um, was published in this book that you can see here. It's quite a typical short story with a bit of a plot twist in the end. Um, it's five pages long, so a prop approximately 12 minutes of reading time. Just our sample came close enough to, I think, with 31 minutes uh, on average. And the important thing here is that we already have validated items to assess text comprehension for the story into micro level, the macro level, and the inference here. Now, the flow measurement, I already told you about the FFS scale. Here you can see it again in a little more detail. And um, the internal distance in our sample was 0.95, so quite high. Now about this text comprehension measurement, um, Chenzen valid validated items or other criteria for the specific um, um, short story uh, to assess text on the, on the mic level with eight yes or no questions, um, whose internal consistency in our sample was 0.46, which you know is not spectacular, but considering that it's only eight items, I think that's good enough. For the micro level, um, participants were given a prompt to write a short text summary, and then we had 16 criteria that Chen Zhen suggested for our rating scheme, and we reached a very high interrater reliability, 0.94. And now for the inference level, we had four yes or no questions. And as you can see here, the internal consistency was only 0.16, which even considering that it's only four items is not great. So take this with a grain of salt. Now the results, first of all, for the micro level text comprehension, 
you can already see just by looking at the relationship that there is a positive association here. So flow is positively and significantly related to text comprehension on the micro level. But interestingly enough, uh, neither general reader skills as measured by the SL SLS nor general reading motivation as measured by the R ARMS um, accounted for any of the variance. Now, kind of the same pattern here for the macro level text comprehension. So again, positive association between flow and macro level text comprehension, no significant association between macro level text comprehension and general reader skill or general reader reading motivation. But for the inference level, you can already see it looks a little bit different. So there's maybe a positive tendency, but it's really not significant for none of the variables in the model actually. Now, if we look at these results, we can say that flow does predict better reading comprehend, uh, comprehension performance but only in terms of the micro and the macro level and not the inference level. Well, that could be a method artifact because as I already pointed out, the inference level measure had quite the poor reliability. And I also noticed that on average participants scored relatively low on the inference um, questions as compared to the micro level questions or the macro um, level rating. And to really rule out that this is somehow a method artifact, I think what I would have to do is to really replicate the study with another um, text and measure comprehension. But if it's indeed a valid result, then that would mean that so can kind of improve text comprehension, but only on these more basic levels where you like encode the details and then form or like construct the discourse structure. But when you go beyond the text, or so when you make inferences, flow doesn't really seem to help you. That's not what I expected, but if that's the case, the best explanation I could come up with is that maybe to draw correct inferences from the text, you have to take a step back from it, which is not what you're doing right now, flow, because then you're just completely involved with it. But I'd be really um, happy to also hear your ideas about this because as I said that's really not um, the result I expected and I kind of thought that if you have better micro and macro level text comprehension that would um, immediately also mean that you have better inference level text comprehension but it seems to be a bit more dissociated here. Now of course this is only one study we only had one text uh, with a pretty non-representative sample almost all women um, and also important here, uh, they were above average readers, which we can see here if you look at their average SLS scores. Um, and as we already discussed, maybe this text and the measures that it came with were not as ideal as I had hoped, even though I do think this, they are the best because they are already validated extensively. But it seems to be that the inferences um, are, are inference level text comprehension is a bit harder for this text than my micro and macro level text comprehension, at least for this sample. And that um, there was also more variance so the reliability of the inference questions wasn't great. So <laughs> there's definitely still questions for future research. Um, first of all, I really would want to, to scrutinize where this unexpected null effect in terms of the inference level is a valid result. And of course, the million dollar question here in general is if there's this positive association between flow and text comprehension, at least in part, um, what is the causal direction here? Um, so the question that this actually implies is that is how can we experimentally manipulate flow during reading without using text manipulations? Because text manipulation would already mess with text comprehension. So how can we investigate this without confounding our results? So this is what I will have to kind of figure out for the future. And again, if you have ideas, I'm very happy to discuss this. But for now, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you at the Eagle Conference. Unfortunately, I'll only um, join online because I'm on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, so please just contact me um, here in this 
email address with the email address if you have questions or if you want to collaborate. I am currently at a lab with just psychologists, so I would love to get in touch more with other reading researchers again. So yeah, again, feel free to contact me and thank you for listening. And I will now stop this and stop the recording. Yes, okay, bye. <laughs>